Hello and welcome to another episode of Once a War. My name is Monty Beatham and I'm joined by an absolute club legend, 173 games, Sam Rapira. Thanks for your time, my man. Hey, kia ora, Monty. Cheers, bro. So you're down in the Coromandel, I know that, uh, but what's your mahi? Yeah, so at the moment, um, I'm currently a PE teacher at Te Whadikuru Manoa, um, which, yeah, I've been enjoying for the last couple of years, it's been prima. It has been prima, but I never thought you were going to be a teacher, man. Uh, you loved cars, so I thought you were going to be a mechanic, man. What happened? Yeah, I, I had it all lined up. Um, one of the boys in Auckland was ready to take me and show me the ropes, but uh, we made the decision to move to Manoa, um, and I think it's been the best move as a family. Kids love it. Um, I get to, you know, help the youth here. You know, you're pretty much helping kids shape them to be what they're going to be as adults, and it's a massive responsibility. So um, being a part of a small community, kura, um, te wharekura manaia, you know, it's a big... You've got a lot of work to do in terms of doing your best to help these kids to achieve greatness, you know what I mean? So it's um, it's a big job, but it's it's actually really, really cool to be a part of something like this. Now, you said you moved back to Manaia because that's where the wifey is from, but are you down at the Coromandel because that's where your brothers are? We know the core brothers for life. We're talking about uh, Benny Matalina. We're talking about Russell Packer, some of these guys that you played with for, for many years. They're all down there. Yeah, no, it was good. Um, caught up with both of them over Christmas and New Year's. Um, like I said, they're, they're only over, over the hill, so it's good to have um, a couple of the boys nearby. It's always good to catch up a person, um, get the families together. Uh, but, yeah, plenty of stories. Um, yeah, always a good laugh, always. Mm. And, um, always, yeah, the same names keep popping up. Um, but, yeah, no, good yarns. Well, I love reminiscing, man. I think it's time to reminisce some of the good times in the jumper for you, my man. Jim, that's Rapira. Oh, and a beautiful ball. Lovely pass from Rapira. Here goes Rapira. Here's Rapira. Straight through. Look at Rapira come through the other side. Rapira straight over the top of two defenders, and that may be the ball game. And here goes Sam Rapira. Sam Rapira will score for the Warriors. Sammy, uh, bro, tough, um, uncompromising. You could play, man. Uh, when you watch that back, uh, what memories come to mind? Yeah, a lot of good memories, but looking back at it, definitely went quick now that I'm sort of mm. sitting here and we're having a chat. Uh, but, yeah, I'd sort of probably a few more tries than what I actually thought I'd got. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, really, really cool. Really cool to see some old footage. Haven't seen any of that for a long time. Uh, you haven't seen it for a long time, but some of your family members haven't seen it at all. Uh, your young man, your young boy, how old is he, and uh, what's he going to think of Dad now? Yeah, my son, he's um, he's just turned four, so um, I suppose he'll only know Dad as, as uh, the teacher. Um, so, he, yeah, I think he'll be surprised. He'll probably never see me with hair too, so <laughs> he'll probably have a bit of a laugh there. Um, but, yeah, definitely... Definitely a real that I'd yeah, definitely like to show my kids. Mm, absolutely, man. Uh, you could play, bro. So when we go back to your first experiences, uh, probably a little bit older than four, uh, when do you first remember watching the Warriors back in the day? When we were playing for my old club, Hukunui, uh, I think we were under sevens at the time. Um, our coach, Uncle Rowley, Rowley Puki, he, he took us up for an end-of-year trip. Um, so, yeah, leaving Hamilton, going up to the Big Smoke, uh, Auckland, and seeing the Warriors play, it was... It was a surreal experience. Um, it was really, really cool. I think the old grandstand, so sort of, from what I remember, um, just steel bars and seats pretty much, <laughs> um, scaffolding. But again, it was a cool experience and um, yeah, one that I'll never forget. OK, so how did your journey start, man? I mean, seven years of age, you watched your first game. Uh, but when did you get the chance to come down and be a part of it? So I think I was 16, 16, 17 um, at Hamilton Boys. I was playing league Friday nights um, and then sort of making the Waikato rep team. Um, and John Devonshire, who's who's based in Huntley, um, he tapped me, tapped me on the shoulder with a few other boys. Um, 
and got us right up to Auckland. We were training there Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and yeah, just a weight session, a field session, and then continued that for a few years. Um, made the junior Kiwis, uh, and then sort of everything unfolded from there. You got the call to go full time because I, I know uh, Daniel Anderson, um, he saw you and he was just like, I've got to have that guy. Who was the, the person on the ground? Who was helping you through that period to, to make sure that you, you know, were doing the right thing in, in front of Ando? Yeah, so um, during my time on those Tuesday, Thursday nights, John Eklund, he was a, a part of the coaching staff at the time. Um, from there, he's been a massive part of um, my career. But he's taught me a lot of things, um, and the way he delivers um, delivers himself, and um, he, he's unreal. He, he gets the best out of you, and he, he puts you around people that can feed off you and you, that you can benefit um, they can benefit from you too. He's yeah, yeah he's a, a bit of a master of actors, so um, he's definitely one uh, one of my favourite coaches. Two thousand and six, uh, what what a year and debut year. He played ten games, which was awesome. In two thousand and seven and eight, I think you played twenty six and twenty seven games, uh, and you're around a, a lot of great players, man. Uh, who were the players that just blew your mind? Yeah, I, I was very fortunate as a middle player um, to have the likes of Pricey and Rubes in the middle. Probably couldn't have off um, two bit of props. They were they were awesome. They they really looked after me in the middle there. Um, little tips and tricks. With Rubes it was, you know, just handbrake down and, you know, <laughs> all guns blazing, and, and which which I liked. And that's sort of how I tried to play myself as well. My carries were my strength, um, which was good. But then it got to a point where after 10 minutes, I was pretty much out of gas. So, um, I remember Pricey telling me to, you know, when you do feel tired, um, regardless, the next set, get the ball and have a carry and you'll be surprised at how you feel. And one game I did that and then from then, my minutes started increasing. Um, and then after a little while, you know, um, a couple of games, I think I'm, I was played uh, 40 minutes straight, which was a massive surprise. But um, yeah, I think over time and experience, you sort of pick up little tricks um, when and when not to rest. Just early on, um, you mentioned a few names already. Who, who else uh, just took you under the wing or, or made life easier for you um, as a, a freshly new debutant um, first year of rugby league? There are a lot of boys that really looked after me. Um, and I think because I was from out of town, they um, yeah they, they treated me um, real well. Lance, he, he took me under, under his wing when I first moved to Auckland. Um, he was my flatmate for the first year while I was in Auckland. He showed me showed me the ropes around Auckland and town there. Um, he showed you the again, nightclubs. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I didn't get that far. But um, on the field, I think he's uh, definitely in the um, best 17 um, that the Warriors have ever seen. He can do anything. Um, best utility, I reckon, in the game. Easy. Um, but... As fullback, I think I really enjoyed him as fullback, but also as hooker because he, off the mark, he was just explosive and could just you know manoeuvre anywhere. Sammy, how much did you weigh? Because you, you you weren't the biggest bloke, man. You definitely played above your weight, man. Majority of my game, my career was around 103, 102 kgs, um, and I think because of that, um, I felt like the harder I run, the faster I run into people, um, regardless of weight. Surely I'm gonna make some yard, and you know what I mean. And again, I was never, I could never get the most meters. But what I try to do is just um, fight and you know play the ball as quick, quick as I can for the boys to sort of get out and do their thing. I think my my sort of mindset for each game was to, to find out who I thought was the the best forward or, or the hardest forward, and my mentality was just to run it as hard as I can. If I get up and play the ball. Um, you know, I've, I've done all right. So, and then after that, I felt like I was good to play, keep, keep going. So each game, that was my mindset. And I mean, my strength was going forward. So um, I just tried to do that to the best of my ability. But growing up um, in the Waikato League wasn't um, as popular as rugby union. So our club, Hukunu, we never had um, the most numbers. So we'd have eight or nine every Friday, but would never, never, ever um, default and would always, you know, front and turn up. And I think um, from a young age, 
my, our mentality was just to go hard or go home, and we never went home. At the start of the week, or during, at one stage during the week, either the tip sheet or you, you, you wait to see who your opposition is, uh, would you just look through and point someone out, or was it you and a coach uh, that would just decide who they wanted you to go after? No, I, I sort of took it on myself. Because um, there was a, they'd always have a few players on each team that were, I suppose, labelled as the grubs. Um, they were always ones that I'd like to um, try and get to as well, um, just to see if they would you know, sort of fight back. But um, yeah, no, it was something that I sort of, it was something for me um, to get me into a game, um, to make myself ready to make sure I was performing for the boys. That was my sort of mentality. Once I started sorting teams out and who knew who was who, um, I sort of tried to line up a few people. And it was out of respect. It wasn't a disrespectful thing, but... Um, you know, I think the hardest person that got me was uh, Petro, big Petro seven receiver. He was like a brick wall, like it, unreal. Um, and that was towards the, the end of his career. Um, but again, I've managed to get up and play the ball, so you know, it's not mm. a good start for the game. 2006. It was your debut year, but it was also a debut year coaching-wise for Ivan Cleary. Um, your thoughts on him? He's probably one of my favourite coaches up there with Eckers. Um, and I feel like uh, Ivan's similar to Eckers in terms of the way um, he he allows you um, to play to your strengths as opposed to the way he thinks a game should be played. Mm. And he was, I felt like he built um, he built a team up that um, everybody benefited from each other. Um, and again, he would give you confidence. There's a few games where I felt like I wasn't uh, performing up to scratch. And I actually approached Ivan and I said, you know, I know I haven't been my best and I think I should play, I should be dropped, you know, go to club. And he just looked at me and he said, look, your worst game isn't far off your best game. And I sort of had to have a think about it. And then, you know, when it, when it clicked, I was thinking, you know, he sort of, he believes in me and my best isn't far off my worst. So, and then after that, like, I just came out and because he had faith in me, I just gave everything and sort of reignited that flame. Um, so yeah, owe a lot to Ivan, and he's yeah, he's taught me heaps. And that was a great period for the club. I think in the five years, um, you were in the final series, four out of the five. I think it was just two thousand and nine when you weren't. If you look back on that now, what do you think were the keys uh, to being so successful? Yeah, I think like like you all know, once um, that um, that brotherhood, there were yeah, it's something you can't teach, you can't coach, um, but when you've got it. It's very hard to break, and um, I can't put it down to one thing why why it was there. But we we definitely had a very strong core, and those that uh, came in uh, adopted it, and again carried on with it. So um, yeah, I can't put it down to anything. Then other than the the group we did have were were, were on the same page, and we were all heading in the same direction. Played in uh, four final series. Uh, there would have been some wonderful games that stick in your mind above the others. A memorable one would have to be the the one before the final against the Storm. They were the best, and we were the ones sort of, you know, coming to challenge them. And then we just took it on ourselves just to give it everything we had, and uh, just unfolded the way it did. And it was a it was a pretty good buzz, especially there on on in the home ground. Um, and I, I remember someone saying that um, Melbourne had actually booked the training facilities and hotels uh, leading up to the grand final for themselves. You know, we were lucky enough that, yeah, we came out on top. Even though we didn't win, the grand final was was special. Amazing atmosphere. The, the support from the Warriors fans was unbelievable. Um, I felt like the whole crowd was um, cheering us on. And I, definitely that'll be have to be up there, up there with one of my best, best moments of my career. Uh, 2011, uh, that is a year um, that the Fab Four, you know, yourself, uh, Benny Matz, uh, Jacob Lilliman, and also Russell Packer, um, the combination was probably one of the best, if not the best, uh, in the history of uh, the Warriors club. Uh, talk to me about that combination, that relationship, and and um, what you liked about each player. Even just break it down, what were their strengths? Big Russ, he was, I think, he was really good at starting because he was, you know, like everyone knows, no nonsense. Um, and he definitely took a lot of the, the initial heat of each game as it comes. It's always hard and fast, but he was always ready 
and he took a lot of lot of the grunt for us, um, big boys. Even though he was young, he was he was actually really good in terms of getting the boys up. So I think that was the key for him too, old Big Ross. Big Bull, Big Jakey, he somehow he just slotted straight in. He was just like one of us and like he had always been there. Um, the type of person he is, um, awesome fella, awesome fella. And again, um, the way he played, you know, suited us too. So um, again, just a workhorse, um, go all day, big carries, big minutes and, and lots of tackles. Uh, Benny Mites, he was, yeah, he was another one who was really good to start, um, big body. And like I said, with Russ taking the most of the grunt, Benny could get in there to follow after and just do his magic. You know, he had a good offload, good good bump and lean on him. So um, definitely good good go forward for us. Let's talk about Benny and that shoulder of doom. Uh, I think they outlawed the shoulder charge probably because of him. Um, the opposition, when they saw that, uh, how scared were they, but also what it did for you guys. I sort of felt sorry sometimes for, for a lot of the opposition. Um, he would, yeah, I felt like he would rattle their bones. I remember one tackle he'd um, done on Friday and the hair flopped back, the water sprayed everywhere. I was thinking, I hope he gets up. Um, but yeah, we grew in confidence when we saw Benny like that. Um, he was he was devastating with that shoulder. You know, if, if he wanted to get someone, he, he'll tell us politely and just quietly. You know, he was never really aggressive. Um, and I think a lot of the times he, in my opinion, he was like a protector. If someone did something to, you know, one of our smaller guys, I knew he would hunt them and he would always get them to. So, you know, a lot of the times when he was putting those shots on some, you know, he was he was looking after the boys. Maybe they, you know, got a bit niggly towards some of us. So he was just straight in there, no mm. questions asked. What was your preference, to start or come off the bench? I actually prefer to come off the bench. As a sort of a bench player, I suppose, your job is to, to lift the team. And I suppose the way I like to play was to just go hard. So another goal for me was to um, try and spark the boys when I did get on the field, get a quick carry or a quick tackle and um, try and do something for the, to lift the team. The other thing about being on the bench is uh, everyone's fired up uh, for that whistle. Two minute bell goes, they're fired up, ready to go. But you, are you deliberately holding yourself back? What do you do to make sure you're ready to fire when you're needed? Yeah, it, it is hard in that moment. Like you said, you know, everybody warms up together, um, get the two-minute whistle, and everybody's, you know, getting the last little drinks and whatnot. Um, but then, yeah, you run to the bench and got to relax again. So it is quite hard mentally, but in saying that, um, pre-game, you know your job. You know, you're going to have a little bit of time on the bench. So um, you get a sort of a two two-minute warning pre-getting onto the field, and that's when turn the switch on and it's all good. 2011, three teams in the grand final, uh, but 2012, and, and then a few years after that, there was a bit of a, a struggle. Um, what do you think that was? I, I've had the question a lot. It's, it's hard to pinpoint. Um, you know, I think Bluey, Brian McClendon came on the scene 2012, um, and awesome, awesome guy. I, I felt like he was a really good coach, but... Um, yeah, so something wasn't right. Um, you know, we had majority of our players, a few, a few new players, a few players had left. Um, so whether it was the team sort of changing a little bit, that sort of changed the dynamics. I'm again, I'm not 100% sure, but um, like I tell a lot of people, you know, training's the same, games are the same, um, the plays are the same. So everyone tries their hardest, but just things weren't quite clicking. You know, being under Ivan, we had that consistency. We had been together for a long time, so uh, we sort of knew each other. Um, but again, when, when we had a few changes, um, something wasn't quite clicking. Um, again, the people were, were good, but um, the results weren't coming. And unfortunately, in, in, in the business, it's, you know, something's got to give. And it was sad. It's sad that coaches, you know, get not the blame, but, you know, have to sort of move on. Um, because like I said, all those coaches are, are very capable, but you know, we just, just weren't turning up. Mm. Now we, we mentioned Brothers for Life and uh, that's the guys that we played alongside, but not all of us are lucky enough to play with our brothers for real. Um, and your brother was just like you, he was just an absolute weapon, Steve. Um, so when did you know that he was coming to the club uh, and how was that experience? Yeah, that was awesome. Um, so we were together 
Um, he, he was with the Junior Warriors for a couple of years, and then he got an offer from the Cowboys. So he took it up, went over there for a few years, um, debuted with the Cowboys, and then, yeah, then he came back to the Warriors, which was a pretty big buzz in the family house. Um, and again, you know, like like for other people that have played with their brother on the field, it's, it's pretty special. Um, we didn't get to do it much. Uh, when we were playing together, we were both in the middle, and I think we were pretty much subbing each other on and off, so we actually didn't get much time together on the field. But again, you know, we were rubbing shoulders on the same game, so it was, you know, special moments. And yeah, not many people get to do it, so um, we were very fortunate. And yeah, spending time with your brother, doing something you love, you know, you can't beat it. 173 games, that is amazing work for the club. Now. That is a lot of games to play alongside a lot of Warriors. Um, who were your favourite Warriors and why uh, to take the field with? I think for me, um, Manu, Manu Vatsuve, he, he was there when I arrived and he was there when I left. Um, just his whole presence on and off the field, he had light the whole room up with a smile. Um, but again, on the field, he was he was a beast. That's, and that's how he got his name, you know what I mean? He. He was a winger, but he was running um, as hard, if not harder, than the Fords. Um, so he's definitely one that I looked up to. Uh, Simon, he's he's one that, um, you know, well, one week I, I didn't see him train at all because he was sick. And then he turned up to the game, played 80 minutes, 40 plus tackles, over 100 metres, went home, back into bed. And I was just thinking, you know what I mean? Like unreal, unreal stuff. But that, that's who he was. He, he could do anything and he'll do everything for you. Um, no excuses, so he's one that everybody would follow as well. Uh, there would have been some wonderful games that stick in your mind above the others. Getting to 150 games, um, that was pretty special. Um, and I think yeah, it was cool walking out with my two daughters um, pre-game. That's one moment that I'll um, definitely cherish. And did you have a hit list in your final years, in your final game? Um, oh, I, I can't remember when I didn't. Um, I can't remember my last game, but it was, you know, um, it was something that I just sort of had to carry with me. Um, I felt like, you know, I'd done it for so long, there was no point changing it. And again, it, it was the way I felt like how I could contribute to my, to my mates, to the club. Um, and I felt like, you know, I was doing the right job, so I just had to carry it on. Are you aware um, how people think of you, um, like me think of you as a legend of the club, but also your kids understanding how dad is placed um, in the club's history as, as one of the greats? Yeah, oh, it's, it's hard. It's hard and it's humbling um, to hear you know, players like, like yourself um, say things like that to me. Um, again, just on the weekend, there's a guy who came up to me and you know, shook my hand and asked for a photo with his boy because, you know, he said I was a legend. And again, it's it feels surreal. Um, I feel like I'm just me, but you know what I mean? Like, obviously, people have seen what I've done over, you know, my career. So it's, um, yeah, like even even now, it still, it still feels funny. But, um, yeah, again, it's, it's yeah, very kind of people coming up and, you know, saying things like that. Once a warrior, always a warrior. Sam, thank you for being a fearless, potent warrior in that jumper, my man. I uh, appreciate your kind words, Once. Cheers, bro. I'm Once Beatham. Thank you for choosing Once a Warrior. I will see you again next week.